On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, it's Christmas time and decorations have gone up. Movie Pass has gone down, in my opinion, if that's if that's possible. What has gone up though is people wanting higher frame rates in their movies. Yes, and also the earth moved. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast Crunchy Edition. Uh, no offense to Crunchy, our friend in Diamond Club. Just man, there's something's wrong with my sound this week. Uh, this is episode 196 for Thursday, the 6th of December, uh, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. I'm currently under the weather, as I guess we all are, but it's affecting me more. I'm going to go ahead and mute that crappy, crunchy sound right now. Um, and Ken, how are you, man? Obviously, I'm doing better than you are, um, man. Yeah, in pre-show, you were hacking up a lung. You're hacking up a lung now, but luckily, mute switches exist. Right, and luckily, uh, our lovely people over at uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery have enabled me to buy a mute switch so that you are not, not having to listen to the hacking and wheezing going on on this end. Uh, yeah, that's true, man. Um, so... Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay. The the Earth moved for Alaska yeah. pretty strongly this week. You live in Alaska. Um, people were texting me and DMing me asking how you were. <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't fucking know. Like, for what? And then I get all the, like, notifications from my news apps. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Like a seven point fucking whatever earthquake in alaska it's like oh yeah let me let me text amos real quick yeah um so thank you for for responding so quickly to my text by the way did i i'm not even sure that i did it was pretty quick yeah okay well that's uh, go me because it was (laughs) the whole morning was uh a a bit off kilter um yeah it uh, so i was on the shitter at work I, i lost the game of don't shit at work and we started getting a little bit of earthquake and I was like, okay, no problem. Started bracing myself against the sides you know, of the stall. And then there's this one huge lurch. Like it felt like we moved a foot and a half, two feet very quickly. And it slammed me up against the, the stall wall. It slid half my ass off this toilet seat. And uh, yeah, that was, that was how that went. And it, it lasted quite a while. Like I, I saw some reports saying 90 seconds. My own experience is probably at least, 30, 45 seconds, um, power went out and it was, it was not, uh, not overly fun. However, as we all know, I think earthquakes are the ultimate roller coaster because you never know when they're going to happen, uh, how strong they're going to be and how long they're going to last and what kind they're going to be. Is it going to be rolling or shaking or whatever? Um, I might be changing my opinion on that after this one. That was, that was quite startling. Like it was, uh, quite the event. And then, of course, I, I escaped the bathroom by way of my f- flashlight on my phone. And there was dust and concrete that had fallen everywhere because I work in an old-ass hangar. And, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it, you know, the part that gets me, though, this is like... So we we had some broken drywall or whatever at the house, some cracks in the drywall, and, you know, some roads and some bridges. Like, every bridge between my house and work is is tilted some way or another to where there's a big bump and you're driving over it and stuff. The thing that got me the worst, though, was I was in the shitter. I went from the shitter after the, the shaking stopped. I went from the shitter, um, you know, clean myself up. Like, I didn't just walk out of the pants just down to my ankles, you know. Um, even had the wherewithal to wash my hands, just in case. And went to my office, grabbed my jacket, because I knew we were going to leave. And my office is right next to the stairway down. Then went to check on my civilian employee. Everyone else had already left the building. No one had gone to check on her. This this older lady, she's probably in her late 60s, was huddled under a desk. Like, I could hear her sobbing. And then right as I started getting her talked out of it, we had the first aftershock, which was like a 5.6 or 5.2. And she scurries back under her desk. And it took three of us, because the others finally came up to see where I was. And found me trying to talk her out of their out of her desk, and we finally got her out of the building. Um, yeah, that was it. Just like 
everyone left, but no one thought, hey, let's go check on the uh, on the old lady that works with us. Yeah, just the man. Uh, I've I've got two like phobias, one of which is sneezing while driving, because I know I'm going to cause like a 76 car pile up one right. time because I sneezed and jerked the wheel. Did I ever tell you about the time I sneezed while driving a 10 K AT at Shaw air force base? Oh my God. So that's a forklift. That's a really big forklift with the hinges in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not stable as it is. Um, and when we were taught to drive it, we were, you know, driving a lot, you know, driving and it starts shaking because the, the axle in the middle will bounce up and down. Yeah. And you're told to either let off the gas and and let it you know let it settle itself down, then get back in the gas, or hit the gas and just power through it. <laughs> and you yeah. and you got to kind of feel which one's going to be worthwhile, you know. Or do you have an open road? Do you have plenty of space? If you're right next to somebody, you don't want to have it. You don't want to let go of it, and uh, and have the, the it start lurching forward, and you having to slam on the brakes. It makes it totally unstable. Mm-hmm. Well. I was driving by myself at like two o'clock in the morning, going back from the cargo yard or the, uh, yeah, the cargo yard to the, uh, vehicle yard and during exercise going back, it started doing a little thing, you know, a little jumpy, jumpy thing. I let off the gas. It got worse. I slammed on the gas. It started leveling out. And right then I sneezed when I sneezed, I twisted the wheel a little bit, hit the curb. Oh, jeez. Now, I probably only hit the curb by like a quarter of an inch, and I barely touched it. But when those big eight-foot-tall tires or whatever on those stupid things hit a small bump like that, and it's already kind of bouncing, it basically just, it was like a like a rodeo horse, man. Oh, it was, yeah. It was nuts. I let off the gas. I slowly applied the brake. I got the vehicle back under control and drove the rest of the way without incident. QA saw me when I hit the curb. Wrote me up for driving recklessly, saying that I was going like 50 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. 50? Those things don't do 50. They do not. You're lucky, lucky to hit, hit 30, 35. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I got it thrown out eventually, but they, they took away my forklift license while I was at Shaw. Hey, yeah. that's not a bad thing. It, it wasn't. I just had to drive the bus from that point, and the buses had air conditioning, so f- screw it. Oh, see. I hated driving the bus. I had to drive the bus in in uh, Iraq, and that was awful. It was worse for my passengers than it was for me, but I was yeah. not a good bus driver. Um, yeah, so sneezing while driving is my mm. number one phobia. My number two phobia is disaster striking while I'm taking a shit. <laughs> and you apparently have lived through both of my worst fears. <laughs> So congratulations for surviving those. I'm the better you. And uh, meanwhile, you got stung in the crotch by a wasp by like 14 times, and I don't, I wouldn't have been able to handle that. So, because me and uh, flying insects, been, I've never been stung in the crotch. Uh, it was close enough to your crotch. It was in yeah. in Oxford on a bike, and you got stung like 15 times, and you were just like, it was, I was not happy. I was, I was fearful for you, and you were just pissed off. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a fear of flying insects. I just, they just annoy me. Like, even <laughs> stinging insects. So I'm like, eh, I, whatever. I, they don't, they don't. It's really worry. just bees and wasps. Like, mosquitoes don't bother me too bad, you know? It's, it's, yeah. it's specifically I'm, bees and wasps. I would get rid of the mosquitoes way before I got rid of bees and wasps. Oh, me too, because if you got rid of the mosquitoes, the spiders would be hungrier and it'd go after more bees and wasps. <laughs> Look, you justify it how you want to justify it, all right? Okay, hey, whatever, whatever. Um, man, um, so it's almost Christmas, sort of. Uh, yeah. Like December. Yeah, we're getting close. Uh, hung Christmas lights. Yeah. How'd that go for you? I mean, as well as we expected. I, Dude, I feel like I just took them down from last year. Probably because you did, because you're lazy like that. No, like I, I always take them down like in the first week of January. Like mm. if I'm super lazy, second week of January. <laughs> uh, it, so it's been like 11 months since I've taken this shit down. But it feels like not even 11 weeks. Hmm. Like I got up on the on the roof and I was like, wasn't I just fucking up here? <laughs> like, oh my God, dude. Like, and from what I understand about aging... It's just going to get worse and worse and worse until we die. 
years are going to start seeming like, well, they seem like months now. They're going to start seeming like weeks and then eventually days and then you're dead. And, uh, yeah. Um, Hey, real quick. Uh, we just got raided by W Scott S one and he brought some folks over and we really appreciate that. So, Awesome. Yeah, um, they say uh, Willie and Sam say hello. Yeah. Well, hello, Willie and Sam. So here's the thing, man. Uh, uh, I put this down as my geeky thing of the week, the Christmas tree, right? Because last year we went out and we did something we'd never done before. Usually we get the fake tree, we put it up and we string the lights and we put the decoration, blah, 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 blah. blah. Sure. Yep. 16 hours and like three blood blisters later, we have a tree. Last year we went out and cut down our own tree. Though You can do that on base because they have certain land that they're clearing, so they'll let you go cut uh, your own tree down and we went out and did that and you know that was fun we brought it back to the house mounted it it was too tall of course because the griswold curse is is alive and well um and then we had to string the lights up and then in the real tree and holy crap what a pain in the ding dong that shit was man that like no so this year i just went i went balls out we don't have a because we we, we got the natural tree last year and our old fake tree was junk. We went ahead and threw it away. And this year, I went ahead and got a Christmas tree, a fake Christmas tree. It looks more real than the real one we had last year. And it's pre-lit. And I got to say, man, holy crap. My job as the tree assembler and light stringer was done in 10 minutes and over with. And I could just step back and let everybody else handle their business. So amazing. Why have I not done this before? Why is this the first year I've got a pre-lit fake tree? Dude, I I had a, fa- a fake tree that was pre-lit. Um, I just threw it away. Uh, actually, I threw it away, well, it seems like yesterday, but I guess it was <laughs> right after Christmas last year. Um, just threw it away because... Those strands, if anything, you know, they're not the most robust electrical work, right? And if anything goes wrong with them, then the whole thing is just kaput. And if they don't light, then that means that you still have to string like your own lights. Mm. But now you've got this unlit strand throughout the tree and it's just, it makes... All I'm saying is enjoy the year or two that you have where they work. That's fine because if it lasts two, maybe three years, more than worth it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. worth it. Oh, my gosh. Right. You know what's not worth it? Movie pass. Ah, uh, the return of the movie pass. This is Dude. like return of the Sith or revenge of the Sith at this point. It's like revenge of movie. Dude, oh, my God. Did, so- you, get, did you get another email? Because remember the last one, it came oh. with like a milk bone or something, right? Dude, I constantly get emails where apparently Mo- Movie Pass has partnered with some arbitrary thing. <laughs> that like the last one I got was a dog walking service, and it said something like, like uh, you know, uh, hire a dog walker while you go to the movies. And it's like, okay, well that'd be fine if there were ever any showings that movie pass would pay for in my area. So there's not, there's one movie theater here and there's never a showing. The last time I had a showing available in my movie pass on a day I was going to go to a movie was like probably two, three months ago. And it was for some bullshit like art film that I wasn't wanting to go see. Like what the hell? So anyway, so I got into the movie pass game at just the right time. Yeah. I got it at the lowest possible pr- price that they they gave. It was a, a 12 month subscription for like something like six bucks a month or something like that. And it was at the time it was unlimited movies. I could go to as many movies with this thing. I, dude, I, I've more than got my money's worth for this thing already. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm not I'm not mad about the investment. I'm like I'm not losing money. But the the thing has become completely useless, unusable. It's just an annoyance now. So I'm like, well, it, my yearly subscription is about to come due. So let me go ahead and cancel it. Uh, I I can't cancel it. Like I can't. 
So I, I'm like, all right, let me play with the app and, and, and the website and see, like the website, there's like no place to cancel. So I'm like, all right, let me go into my, my app and cancel this service. Couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what the hell? All right. So I Googled it and I, I found an article. The article is from PCMag.com and it said, okay, so follow these steps. Go, you know, click on these menus, right? So I, I do it. So you go, you go into account details and then you go to plan and billing. But what happens when I click on plan and building or billing? It says, hold on, it disappeared. Let me, let me read it again. It says the data couldn't be read because it is missing. And I end up <laughs> with this blank page. This is the page that allows you to cancel, and it's just not there. It says, like, no, nope, I don't know, dude. Like, good luck with that. Oh, that is amazing, dude. Oh, my gosh. That's, that, that is awesome. Yeah, no, it's uh, the opposite of that. But apparently the author of the PC Mag article had the same issue. <laughs> but then he's he's like, He's like, yeah, but just keep trying, like, keep trying, and it'll it'll eventually go through. I've been trying, like, every couple of hours. I will try it like eight times every couple of hours for the last two days, mm. and I've done the same thing every single time. I'm pissed. I th there is a phone number that this article cites, and I'm I am going to call that number probably tomorrow. And it's not, it's not going to be fun for whoever answers the phone. I am Jesus. the fuck movie pass. I'm so done with you. You're crap. You're garbage. You were awesome a year ago. You are complete trash now. And you just need to go out of business right now. Just stop existing. Movie pass? More like trash pass. Yeah, more like movie trash. I don't Jesus. Anyway, so speaking of trash movies, a trash way to watch a movie is apparently the default setting that your TV uh, probably has um, motion smoothing or the soap opera effect or whatever uh, your particular TV uh, brand of TV calls the thing. Um, apparently, we've been watching movies wrong. Uh, Tom Cruise came out with a PSA of sorts. Uh, yeah, sure. Tom Cruise and um, uh, Christopher Christopher McQuarrie, which is the director of the most the, recent yeah, Mission the, Impossible movie. Is it Mission Impossible or is it the? I guess it is Mission Impossible, right? Because he's on the set of the new uh, the, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they they went on like this four minute rant <laughs> about to turn this shit off because it's making our movies look like garbage. Uh, M Beam says interpolation. Yeah, um, yeah. Th there's there's so many names for this thing. So I, I thought I would. All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and check this out. Right now we've got a Samsung, uh, an older Samsung TV. It was like one of the first 3D TVs that mm -hmm. came out. Um. Went in there to try to find the the setting, right? So I could turn it off. Man, like they're not wrong. Uh, when they were ranting about this setting and how it's like difficult to find, dude, I had to get like I was like eight or nine menus deep before this motion blur thing was even discussed. And they, uh, true motion or no, 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 that's what LG calls it. Uh, Samsung calls it a uh, motion plus or auto motion plus. And I found it under motion plus, like I said, like eight or nine menus in to turn it off. And I, I, right after I turned it off, I sampled Thor Ragnarok and I got to say it looked pretty good, but without like a, a side by side hmm. comparison, I am not sure how much an improvement it made, but you know, maybe it was just my, you know, confirmation bias in my head. I was like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, now that I went through all these, all these, all this work to try to find the spot, I guess that is pretty good. 
yeah, I got to convince myself that it was worthwhile spending that 10, 15 minutes searching through menus. Um, yeah. Well, so I don't know. Maybe it's a thing. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. To discuss when it's supposed to be, they set it up that way so that sports are more fluid. Um, But movies are uh, no, just try it for your your mileage may vary. Yeah, that's that's what that's what I'm thinking. Um, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I've got a brand new TV on the way. That should be here like literally any day. Like it should. It, it, I'm expecting it tomorrow. Actually, like it should be here now. Um, shipping was supposed to be uh, it said seven to expect seven to ten yeah. days ground mm-hmm. shipping. But here I am in Alamogordo fucking nowhere. Right. Add two days. Like whatever. So like Amazon Prime guaranteed two day shipping. Right. Like I I get it in three at the fastest. So uh, I think yesterday was day 10. So I'm expecting this fucking TV tomorrow. Anyway, I found the best Black Friday deal ever on an on an lg oled mm-hmm. uh 65 inch um the e8 i was shopping for the c8 but the deal on the c8 and the e8 were so ridiculously good like we're talking like half price for these fucking tvs i was like you know what i'll spend the extra 200 bucks to get the e because because why not i'm saving like 1200 dollars. right and um Dude, I am so excited to have an OLED TV. Like right now, we're rocking a 55 inch LED. This is a 65 inch OLED. I am like shaking with excitement and a little bit upset that it's not here yet. Uh, uh, M-, M Beam says uh, you must not have read the links I posted last week. Uh, mostly negative reviews from that site, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I. Mm, mm, eh. We'll see. <laughs> if nothing else, it makes a good story. Hey, um, what, where, where are we at? Uh, speaking of stories, I hear there's a movie draft that happened, and one of our favorite teams is currently leading. Is uh, uh, what's the, we, shall we see if that's still? Yeah, I'm curious what uh, what Jay has to say. About yeah, it. so am I. So I got to bring up the little thing, hit the little button, and here it is. Welcome, dear Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of December 3rd, 2018. I'm your host, Big Boys Jay. If you see someone in the office flavoring their coffee with eggnog, trust me, that guy jingles. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Movie Party's in last place with $96.7 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming falls to fifth place with $216.6 million. Team Vod Squad moves up to fourth place with $227.3 million. Team Game Night maintains third place with $316.3 million. Team Ever Drink is in second place with $380 million. And in first place with $393.6 million. It's Team Retro Misery. That's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of December 5th, 2018. Still on top, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, and, and we still had the top movie for the weekend with uh, Ralph Break the, Breaks the Internet coming in 8 million over its closest competitor, The Grinch. Yeah. You know, and The Grinch is killing it right now, dude. They've got over 200 million. And, a little bit jealous. Like I really thought Ralph Breaks the Internet was going to be uh this season's um uh Incredibles, Incredibles 2. 2. Yeah. Which, I mean, I mean it's not doing bad. It's got 123 million. Mm. Yeah, but it's not Venom money. <laughs> yeah, true, true. But I mean, we've got a Star is Born, so, you know, that that like really like yeah. really did us good. Um, that that is currently the best buy in in the draft. So. Right when we paid twenty two for it, which everyone said we overpaid for, currently it's still still tops. Yeah. So, so. next week or or this coming weekend, um, is we, it this weekend or is it next? Um, it? So Engines, it's next it's weekend. Next weekend. So we don't have any movies coming out this week. No. Next weekend. That bodes well for last... Ralph Breaks the Internet. <laughs> Yeah, so the next next weekend our last movie comes out. Mortal Engines. I know it's a controversial pick. I am still holding to the idea that it's gonna be a second week winner. 
because people are gonna people are looking at the current marketing campaign and like, what the fuck? What is this movie? Mm. This is stupid. But the faithful are gonna go watch it and they're gonna see how awesome it is and tell everybody, and then it's gonna make all the money. That's my hope. And if it does, then um, we're gonna win this thing. But uh, Bumblebee's coming out. Um, Aquaman's Aquaman. Spider Man's coming out. Um, my now, one thing that gives me hope: Spider Man's going to make a bunch of money, but the current, currently last place team has that movie. Mm. I don't see them as a threat to our position yet. Yet, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Well, I mean, it, it'll be an interesting call either way. It'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll make a good story. Yeah, W. Scott One says that the Team Movie Party has both Spider Man and Bumblebee, and both of those movies have the potential to either do really well or flop. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, I I think they're both going to do well. Bumblebee, I I feel Bumblebee is going to make all the money in the world, man. It's going to make Venom money. That's my prediction for Bumblebee. I don't because I don't have know. Have you seen those? Tra- First of all, Transformers movies make money. You, everybody talks crap about them. Yeah, yeah, they suck um you know uh f michael bay whatever this movie's not directed by michael bay number one number two have you seen the trailers for bumblebee this is g1 magic like it oh god this is the first time i've been excited about a transformers movie since Uh, the first one came out look man we bought mission impossible this summer based on the fact that every movie has brought in more than the previous incarnation of the of the, uh, of the of the series yeah and it did not do us any favors at all yeah so i'm not um i, uh, it, I don't and know. by all counts that was a good movie that was like a really good movie yeah and it didn't do us any favors at all yeah uh w scott Swan says that glass is going to make all the money um uh, I think it's going to do well. I it's not going to make Bumblebee money. That's <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah, this is going to it's going to come down to the wire, I think, and it's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, so. totally, totally. Cuz watching is all we're going to do <laughs> after next week. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're, we're spectator mode at that point. Um, hey, uh, if you want to continue seeing awesome shows like this, you just cruise on over to patreoncom Misery. We have skipped over this little bumper the last several weeks. Because we don't want to shove it down your face. But I will say that the support we get on Patreon is really what makes this show happen and makes it the the force to be reckoned with that it is. Um, the millions and millions, the droves of people that have gone to patreon.com slash ritual misery and given us at least a dollar, um, they're, 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 our undying gratitude is their reward. The show continues because of their support. And uh, with all those people there, why wouldn't you want to be one of them? Cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Pledge a dollar. Uh, you can even cap it at a dollar. That's cool if that's what you got to do. But let's make some magic happen. It only happens with you. So patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. You guys hear how messed up Amos's voice is. What you don't hear is him coughing his face off whenever I'm talking. Because he has a mute switch on his mic, and that is thanks to our patrons. So thank you very much, patrons. Yeah. If you want to be one of them, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hey, uh, Jay has something else to say, doesn't he? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. Like, I am hooked. Like, uh, I am re-hooked. This is like probably my third or fourth time of actually like like getting addicted to this game. And like I am I am way into it right now. Jeez. So Pokemon, Pokemon's on my brain. I I came up with this game. It's called Poke What now? Pokey Brain. Poke what now? Pokey Brain. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to say a name and you are going to tell me if it's a Pokemon 
or if it's a real animal. Oh, this could be I, fun. Yeah, like, and probably don't read the chat because a lot of chat probably knows what's a Pokemon and what's not. Uh, but I know that you probably know the names of like three Pokemon. So uh, maybe four. <laughs> All right. All right, dude. Your first name is Oxalotl. Oxalotl. Real. You're going to say that Oxalotl is real? No. Oh, yeah. See? See, I'm good. Yeah, that's a, that's a real animal. It's a bird, uh, isn't it? In fact, let's see. Hold on. I've got the, uh, got the receipts right here. Oxalotl actually is an amphibian. Oh. Actually, a cute little thing. Um, hmm. If anybody wants to look that up, it's spelled A-X-O-L-O-T-L. It's a really cute little amphibian thing. All right, your next animal or creature or whatever you want to call it is named Licky Licky. Licky Licky. Licky Licky. Is that a Pokemon or a real animal? It's, it's Licky Licky. Uh, sure. It's, it's a, <laughs> I, I know it's a Zelda creature, that a Zelda dungeon creature, because it eats your shield. Yeah, I believe it's spelled differently, though. <coughs> Um, I'm going to go with uh, Pokemon. You think Licky Licky is is a Pokemon? Yeah. yeah. You are correct. Licky Licky. Yeah, this is a, uh, a giant pink thing with a just g absolute ginormous tongue, and it's called Licky Licky. Yep. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> all that, right. that sounds so Japanese. Next, yep. Your next one is Bidoof. Bidoof. Bidoof, I'm going to go with um, Pokemons. Bidoof is indeed a Pokemon. Yep. Um, it's a really funny looking guy. It looks like a little, um, um, I don't know, like a, a otter or something like that. But it's got like real big buck teeth and it's <laughs> like got kind of a stupid look on his face. It's like Bidoof. Like that's what I think of when I see it. It's like Bidoof. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the next one is named Aggravation. Aggravation. Clearly a Pokemon. So you say that Aggravation is a Pokemon. <laughs> that is indeed a real creature. It is a. Uh, beetle, an aggravation. And and I'm I'm separating the the syllables on purpose because it is indeed two words, aggravation, and it's a type of beetle. Hmm. There's actually forty thousand species of aggravation. I I know one uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your next one is called per ugly. Her ugly. Oh, that's a uh, that that's definitely a Pokemon's. Yeah, that's a cat, of course. With a purr. It's an ugly right. cat. Purr ugly. Most of them are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, w Scott's one uh, poured out some salt for you. Um, your next one is called mm. Aha Ha. Aha ha. Um, we're gonna go with Pokemon's again. You say that aha ha is a Pokemon. Yeah. Aha ha is actually a type of insect from Australia. I'm sure it is. <laughs> it's a. Is I it... don't know, man. <laughs> is, it, is it related to the aggravation? I don't think so. I don't think this one is a uh, beetle. I, I, if I, somebody I, could Google image search that and, and throw up a I, I think I they're think. related. <laughs> they might be. <laughs> All right. So the next one is called I. -I. Um, that's definitely a Pokemon's. I, I is a Pokemon, you say. 
<laughs> that is a real animal. I I is um let's see, it's found in Madagascar. Of course it is. And I'm not sure exactly what kind of animal it is. If somebody could be um hmm. produced in the <laughs> in the chat, that'd be awesome. Um but yeah, so it's spelled like um almost like if you're in the navy and you say I I captain. It's spelled like that with a dash in between the eyes. So I I so A Y E dash A Y E. All right. Your next one is called Slurpuff. Slurpuff. Pokemons. Slurpuff is a Pokemon, you say. <laughs> Indeed, you are correct. Your next one is called Pizza Cake. Pizza Cake. Uh, that's not hard. It's a pizza cake. <laughs> so is that is that a real animal or is that a Pokemon? That's a Pokemon. You say that pizza cake is a Pokemon. <laughs> that's a real animal. Uh, a pizza cake, and it's spelled, as soon as I scroll down to its entry... Uh, pizza cake, by the way, in this list that I'm looking at, is right below penis snake, which is also a real creature. Uh, pizza cake is spelled P I E Z A space K A K E, and uh, it's a small furry fly. Pizza cake. The, um, Apparently, do you, you suck at enunciations? Do I? Yeah. What's wrong with pizza cake? Because it'd be more like a piezzicake. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Killing me, right. Smalls. So your your final uh-huh. creature is called... Pokemons. Ho- oh. Ho-oh. Pokemons. And uh, you're doing that just based on math, I think. <laughs> So I'm going to have to change up the way I do this and do like three and seven or something like that. Uh, because indeed, Ho-Oh is a Pokemon. Um, you get a D, but that is indeed a passing score. You got six out of ten. Ds get degrees. That's exactly correct. Um, so yeah, congratulations. Or at least diplomas. Yeah, exactly. So anyway... So that was the uh, that was Pokey what now? <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, I, I I I still might uh, rules lawyer my way into some enunciation changes, but uh, overall I'm I'm satisfied with the result because I got more than fifty percent. It's totally pizza cake, by the way. <laughs> um, no, so so if you hadn't done the math on what was what, would you have still said Ho O was a Pokemon or or? Do you think you might have said that was a real animal? Um, you know, I honestly don't know because I thought the others were like completely fucking Pokemons. And I probably would have said it was a Pokemon unless I got gun shy because uh, I'd already said they were all Pokemons and they weren't. So Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Fun times. So if, if anybody's interested in the uh, the animal thing, um, animalsake.com is where I found this list of the animals with the weirdest names mm. animalsake.com or if it's a japanese site which it might be it would be animal sake oh now you're open to enunciation changes <laughs> um yeah but no this one is definitely pizza cake uh-huh, uh-huh. no no it's definitely pizza cake jerk yeah like they reference it in the description it's pizza cake uh-huh mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyway, um, dude, what else is a a piece of cake? Or, well, actually, you know what's not a piece of cake? Uh, Streamathon. Streamathon. Scheduling the Streamathon. Um, It's all right, though. I am about 95% solvent on the schedule. Uh, We definitely have enough streamers for this thing. If you, for whatever reason, if you wanted to, like, 
still be part of the streamathon and you're not already signed up for it, head over to bit.ly slash streamathon2018 sign up. Uh, go ahead and sign up. We might have people drop out. Uh, something might come up. Uh, we've had streamers in the past um, all set to stream, and then uh, like a, a neighbor's yard caught on fire. They had to cut their stream short. Uh, and we had people lined up to, to step in and, and help out with that. If you want to yep. be one of those people or um, help out in any way with the streamathon, uh, tech support, uh, getting the word out of, about it, uh, any of those sorts of things, bit.ly slash streamathon2018, sign up. Uh, for those that are listening right now that have signed up, within the next day, hell, I might even have it out tonight, but I, I'm not going to commit myself to that. Within the next day or two, the draft schedule will be in your hands. For those of you that are not involved but are interested in watching it, I will send you over to twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. If you are not already following that channel, go ahead and do that now. There are links on the page right now that are not accurate. It is last year's schedule. It is last year's donation link. It's last year's everything. But... We need tech support on that stat. Yeah, but... Uh, well in advance of the streamathon taking place, the links will be updated with the current information. The new schedule will be published. That'll probably be the first place to find the schedule. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of good, amazing, awesome streamers lined up. Uh, a lot of people that have streamed before. We've got some people that have not streamed before. It's going to be awesome. I don't want to announce. Um, specific streamers right now but just know it's gonna be a lot of fun we have at least one surprise appearance already planned yes it, yes exactly and um i'm not sure how i'm gonna list that in the schedule we'll have to we'll, we'll workshop that yeah. <laughs> amos you and i um another thing that is coming up though is rmp's episode 200 it's gonna be an awesome show where we reminisce about the past 200 episodes of this show we've been going for what amos four years and change yep pretty amazing we're going to talk about the origins of rmp we're going to talk about some of the milestones uh there's there might be some surprises there might be some things so um, so i was thinking about this and night attack hits their 10-year mark next year we hit yep. our five-year mark next year yep so half the time and about a hundredth of the success. We are doing awesome. Uh, keep it up. It's a it's it's one of those little scales that just goes up more the further you go, right? Yeah. Hey, um, guys, if you have not taken our audience poll, please go do this. This takes less than a minute. Go over to yellow420.com slash rm. P two hundred, the numbers two zero zero, yellow four twenty dot com slash rmp two hundred. Take our poll. I promise you, it takes less than a minute. Uh, we've gotten some real good feedback on there. Um, some expected results, some things that were a little surprising to me. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that your voice is heard. I I have intentionally not looked at the poll. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, I want to. I, so, I want to yeah. wait until uh, probably the week prior before I actually look at it and see if there's anything that's uh, outstanding oh. on there. I don't want to go into it blind, but I definitely, uh, I definitely want to wait until because I don't want to say something on the show or whatever else to skew how things are going or whatever. I want it to be right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, make sure your voice is heard. Get over there. Uh, tell us your favorite moments, favorite guests, all of that sort of stuff. It's yellow420.com/rmp200. Amos, what else? What else we got uh, going on this week? Anything? Um, next week we won't be here, but we will have Squid here. Uh, he's going to come out with a surprise episode of something to cover for us, which should give uh, Kent a, a, another week to make up for episode one ninety one, and we make allow me to make up for episode one ninety five from Earthquake Weekend. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, 
And that's it, man. Uh, people can find you at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter and uh, Untapped and things like that. Just look for Del Noche and you'll either find it under Del Noche, RM underscore Del Noche or Del Noche 77. Exactly. Man, you are Ethan Kane on Twitter because that makes sense. Yes, it does. And, that's, and you're like, Ethan Kane pretty much everywhere. Pretty much everywhere, yeah. yeah that's, that's how it works. Um, you can find the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. You can uh, uh, submit ideas on our subreddit, the underused subreddit, uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every th- every ish, Thursday-ish, at 7 p.m.-ish, Pacific Time-ish. <laughs> on uh, twitch.com slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use the music that I'm going to hit right now and then uh, unmute because the channel sucks right now for whatever reason. And uh, it's actually Ooh. getting worse as we go along. I'm just going to go ahead and mute that and just call it a day. And uh, we'll put that in a post. And uh, <laughs> thank you for listening and watching. For, uh, for Kent, for me, for you, and for the voice I used to have, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. They were all just like you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That'll uh, that'll work. R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Words. Sing. Letters. I can't. I can't sing or spell. Apparently. Uh, well, I mean, according to you, I can't pronounce words. So, see, it's just mouth. You can't mouth today. <laughs> oh, poor her. Oh.